Hello, it's Lion here with Hobbies and Men. Once again, and today we're going to be doing our another uh, Blue Lock review. We're going to be looking at the second part of Arc 2, which is the um, first selection arc. This is chapters 23 to 38, or actually all of cha all of Volume 4 and most of Volume 5, um, just so you guys kind of know. Um, and I did initially review the first part of this, Volumes 2 and 3, but I, at the time, I didn't have access to more volumes, so that's why I had to go halfway. Um, so this is going to finish that up, and then we're going to do a review for the uh, second selection, which is the third arc, which goes up to chapter 90, right? So, yeah, uh, since this is the first review of this series for this year, I will go through the book facts. Uh, but if you already know them, feel free to skip the, the, uh, the intro, right? So the author here is Minuyuki Kaneshiro, which is the same guy that, read, that, that, that wrote... Uh, Yagon and Grash Ross, and uh, as the gods will. Uh, the artwork here is by Yusuke Nomura, and I can't remember what he worked on, but he's a really good uh, artist. It's published by Kidansha. Uh, the demographic here is Shonen. It's uh, in the same magazine as Fairy Tale and Eden Zero and uh, Fire Force, if I remember correctly. Uh, and the genres here are just sports, and you can honestly say it's kind of like a death game, but not really. It's like kind of in that vein, but not exactly does have an adaptation and it is coming out right now i think it just finished or is about to finish here soon and i will probably end up reviewing that on the channel as well at some point so uh you know subscribe if you want to watch that eventually um and the premise of this part of the story is basically uh it's match five and we have to deal with the fact that team z is a bunch of prodigies three of them and they are um sorry team v is a bunch of prodigies three of them and they're gonna basically destroy team z but team z is is going to try to figure out a way to beat this, beat this trio of, of of soccer monsters right so um that's basically all there is to it um plot line wise it starts with team z's room uh, they're trying to figure out a strategy for team v uh, uh rio's um background gets explained he is this uh son of a kind of corporate group um and they're like someone He's the son of a very rich person, and he's been basically given everything he wanted ever. Eventually, he decides he wants to play soccer, and his family tells him no. So this is the first thing that he's ever wanted that he hasn't gotten, and so it makes him excited, right? At some point in school, he met this guy, Naki, and this guy was super good at sports and stuff like that, but he didn't really care about trying. So Ryo manages to convince Nagi to join forces with him, and they become friends, and so they uh, work together. Then we can introduce this other character, Santetsu, um, and he makes up the trio of um, of characters that are really powerful in Team V. And we get their blue lock, blue lock ranking change, so everyone kind of changes. Uh, Kuon is somehow at the top uh, for some reason, and everyone else is lower. Isagi is not at the bottom, but he's not uh, super in the top. I think he's kind of in the middle, in the middle of the pack. Um, and then... Uh, Isagi is like, I need to develop my weapon quickly. So he actually goes up to Baro for help. Um, and he doesn't get it exactly, but Baro still tells him enough stuff that Isagi can figure out something about it. And so he develops like a new strategy, right? So he, um, he kind of does this and then the game starts. And uh, Team V basically starts out to crush Team Z. Uh, they get demoralized really fast, but Bachiro manages to turn a zero into a one, basically. He... Um, to use their own terminology, he manages to push through and use the skills and kind of evolve a little bit. And so he manages to score. So this kind of changes the dynamic of the game a little bit and it makes everyone excited, right? So they do this and then there's a big back and forth. And eventually Kunigami gets the ball and he scores again. So they're tied at this point. Halftime, Isagi and Nami, uh, Nagi develop a rivalry here. Um, and Ego explains what an awakening is. And then we continue the game. Uh, they lose again. Team Z is losing again. Then Chigiri manages to score. And then uh, Naki awakens. And uh, the score changes to 2, 4, to 3, right? So uh, basically what happens is that Naki didn't really care. But Isagi managed to force him to do something. And so... Um, this changes his 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 mentality. He is frustrated now, and this frustration causes interest in him. 
and then he decides to start trying, right? So it's, it's really, really good and cool, and it, it just works really nicely. Um, and then Kunigami scores again, so it's 4-4. Four, four. And then Isaki develops his awakening a little bit. He, he kind of develops his powers a little bit. And we get Kuon's backstory. And then as they're about to lose, Kuon tackles Ryo, uh, or Nagi. I, I can't remember which one he tackles, but he tackles one of them. And he gets a red card, so he gets ejected from the game. That means that he's not going to automatically pass. And it basically turns out that he he realized that he was missing what he wanted. But in Blue Lock, he found a bunch of people that wanted to play the way he wanted to play. They were serious about what they wanted to do in soccer. And he sacrificed himself for their sake, for Team Z's sake. Um, so he kind of redeems himself, but not really. And so he gets red carded. And then they only have one minute, one minute left. And Ayamon stops Rio's... Uh, uh, free kick, which is awesome, and then uh, Isagi gets the ball, does an awesome drive, and he scores, and he wins, and so the uh, game ends, and uh, Team C manages to advance to the next round, which is awesome. It was really, really good. It's very exciting. I really enjoyed this uh, a lot, actually. In terms of characters, we get introduced to Ryo, Nagi, Santetsu, and we get a bunch of introductions and developments for their stories, as well as some of the other stories for other characters, like uh, Kuan, uh, and we get uh, some Is Asa Isagi buildup uh, here, which is great. He kind of starts developing himself a little bit more because uh, he is the main character, but he kind of started off as the least interesting out of all of the other characters, right? So uh, Isagi's story is about developing himself uh, the most, right? Which is really, really good. In terms of world, world building, we don't really get too much. We do get uh, an explanation about what Awakening is. It's basically like a character knows themselves and know their skills and have perfected their skill for or, or have been really good at making their skill work for them but there comes a time where this isn't enough anymore so the character has to develop something else and that's when their like skills level up basically that's what an awakening is right so it works really nicely there in terms of artwork of course it's really really amazing and in terms of fan service there is none at this point um mostly because there was no character pages or sorry no chapter pages uh that could work as a fan service thing, right? So there you go. So the ratings of four and five was pretty great. I think if I had read the whole arc in one go, it would have been awesome. Um, but because I didn't, because I had to stop halfway, it wasn't as awesome as I thought it would be. Like the build up wasn't there. I kind of started in the middle of the, the rising action. And so I had to kind of catch up to that and that makes it a little bit less enjoyable, right? So it is what it is. But that's bullock number um, three and four or arc, part, uh, arc two, part two, or chapters 23 to 38, whatever you want to refer to them as. So there you go. That's my review of the second part of the um, first selection arc of Blue Lock, And I hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys later.